Welcome to the After Show Show for episode 78. If this is your first time tuning in, this is not the main episode. This is the Yarbin to the main episodes, Yubin, where we talk about the leftover songs we didn't have time to mention or other topics of interest. I'm glad you didn't say anything disgusting and welcome. <laughs> for all you know, Yarbin could be deadly disgusting. You just don't know. Deadly disgusting. Deadly. Just yeah. like you've been dashingly I don't disgusting. Know wow. Disgusting. Wow. 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 Whoa, wow. she's my love. I love her so much. I love her. I love her. She's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, this episode, we're going to talk about a couple of things from yeah. uh, some maybe movies in Korea. Yeah. We're going to talk about Pretty Rap Star again, but probably not for very long. Yeah, hopefully this nope. time. Yeah. And we're talk gonna, about like every week. Yeah. Um, we're also going to talk about something that we both love and we've been in love with lately yeah. and that is league of legends yeah. um as you can see from my jacket um and also i knew we, i was gonna do this before i said start but you know that flashback segment yeah that we were gonna do i kind of want to keep doing it just so it's it's uh but we didn't write anything down yeah well we can just look at the next one right no we can just look at episode uh was it 68 right it's it was 68, 68 last time right Oh, it was 67 last time, time, so we'll yeah. do 68. All right, yeah. well, anyways, we'll talk about Flashback. Flashback is where we talk about songs from about six months ago yeah. and see if they're still on our on our sh hit list. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, it's basically uh, 10 episodes ago. So it might be a couple weeks off, give or take, but it's pretty much about half a year ago. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so let's start. Uh, Josh, you wanted yeah. to talk about movies and kind of go to yeah, movies. Yeah, I kind of want to talk about movies because the movies... Uh, ex whole experience is really different in Korea. Uh, first off, uh, a lot of people may or may not know that the movies that you see in the States or Canada, a lot, a lot of times Korean cinema won't show certain movies. Um, not sure if it's because of ratings or whatever, or just public interest, but there's just some movies that just don't get shown. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. I think one of the reasons is that Korea is very lucky or Asian countries are very lucky because Korea gets movies from every. They, they get American yeah. movies, yeah. they get Chinese movies, yeah. they get Japanese movies, yep. and they get a lot of some European movies. Yeah. And, and they also, of course, have Korean movies. Yeah. So uh, combine that with the fact that you don't get mega mall theaters like you get in America where there's 30 screens. Yeah. Right? A lot of theaters have maybe 10 max, or maybe 20. Yeah. Maybe 20. Yeah. Um, but. They, they just can't show us much. Yeah. So, uh, like, for example, the Avengers came out early in Korea uh, versus, like, the States. One week early, yeah. motherfuckers, I'm so... Uh. Yeah. And then uh, then you'll have, like, some movies that will just get, like, a month late sometimes. So, like, Ant-Man yeah. uh, got released, like, two months, three months later than normal. And yeah. I was so fucking angry. Yeah. Because I need to be... Like, I'm the dude that's, yeah. like, if it comes out Wednesday at midnight, I'm going to that yeah um i need to see it as early as possible and yeah. i was so pissed yeah and, and just for big name movies in general uh the whole process is just wildly different for example the martian uh last weekend i was in seoul with my girlfriend and we wanted to watch the martian mm -hmm. uh and we had we had planned this even before the martian had come out mm -hmm. like okay we're gonna watch the martian we're gonna watch it this weekend and Korea is different from the States in that in Korea, you buy a spot, you buy a mm -hmm. seat in the, in the Korean movie theater. So basically you had to go and buy a seat. And we didn't realize that pretty much all the movie theaters in Seoul would be like packed as fuck. Packed as fuck. And there was only like the first row or the second row. And we're mm -hmm. not going to watch the movie like this. So we ended up not being able to watch it because even though we like tried to reserve a seat the day before. Mm -hmm. It was like, no good seats left. And in America, that is kind of the case sometimes. Um, yeah. But usually it's just like, you just line up. I mean, America is first come, first serve. Uh, for the most part, I yeah. know there are some newer theaters now that do assign seats. Yeah, but you just kind of line up and just go in by the line. And I'm not, hate. I'm not saying one is better than the other. but One is definitely better than me, the other. For me, I prefer the Korean version where you reserve your seats because say if you have a big party of like maybe eight people mm -hmm. and you're gonna take up a whole row like it's much easier to just be like okay i'm gonna buy this whole row out and i have to worry about it and if you're in america you just be like oh god hurry we gotta rush. get there an hour oh, early hurry. yeah you waste so much more time uh in american theaters and i really hope that 
uh, American theaters can kind of adopt this yeah. method. Like there, there have been so many movies in my life because I want to see them first, yeah. right? I want to see them the, the day of midnight. Like there's so many movies I've waited three to five hours with friends, sit standing there in line, yeah. first come first. Same. Time. And Same it's like. Me. You know, I did it because at the time, that's what you got to do. But coming yeah. to Korea, it's like, holy shit, why isn't assigned seating more of a thing? Yeah. Like, it makes so much sense. Why don't they do yeah. it? Yeah, and then, and then some movie Dumb. theaters, they have, like, specific boxes for, like, couples where the, the sides are kind of, like, closed off. A little off. more privacy. Yeah. privacy. And the seats are bigger. Yeah. Or space yeah. is bigger. Yeah. Seats are bigger. They don't yeah. cost any more money yeah. than a normal seat. Yeah, and then, like, the middle kind of stanchion can kind of like come up come so you can get a little, little mm -hmm. cuddly you know, a little cuddly you know what I'm saying you know, go share some theater, popcorn get, 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 get some of that get butter on your fingers get a little bit freaky dicky you know and a Korean movie theater but that happens and uh, another thing I want to mention about Korean movie just experience is that there are pretty much no previews it's awesome um, so if a if a movie, if you're buying a ticket for a movie that starts at 6.45, you better get your ass mm -hmm. to that movie at like 6.35 and go in and get your seat. Mm -hmm. Because the movie's going to start at 6.45, maybe 6.50. Mm -hmm. Like the only kind of ads that you'll get are maybe from like the, the actual theater itself. But there are no previews whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I've been in one theater where there were two previews. Yeah, but, uh, like, but it's definitely not the none. 20 to 30 minute thing yeah, in America. Yeah, little to none, right? Yeah. And that's good and bad because one, uh, you just cut straight to the point. But a lot of people like to watch previews because... Those people are dumb. They they get like, oh, I want to watch that movie. Oh, I want to watch that movie, right? But I really hate it because that just gives people a reason to come into the movie theater when everything's dark and to try to crawl over your knees and be mm. like, excuse me, excuse me. Mm. And you're like, god damn, can't you just come here on time? Mm. Please. Mm. Please. Uh, so I hate it for a totally re different reason. Like, right. this is... Um, like, I... I think previews, like I know I'm a different person mm. than, than normal moviegoers, right? Because I think the average moviegoer, it blows my mind, but it's a thing. Yeah. And I've asked people, but yeah. normal moviegoers go to the movie theater first, then decide what movie they want to watch. That's weird. That's weird to me. I, I don't know a single person that does that, like personally. That's weird. But I've heard from, from a lot of people. What some, if there like, are no good movies to watch? They don't care. They just go watch one. Weird. Like you're on a date. You you go with a girl on a date. It's not like, hey, let's go watch Ant Man. It's like let's go watch a movie. Maybe I'm so weird you meet too, but you know. meet up at Is the movie true? theater and then you pick the movie there, right? Like that's crazy to me. But I've heard from multiple people, more normal than I, that that's a normal thing. See, like that's that boggles my mind. See, because because for me it's like. Oh, let's watch Ant-Man this weekend. Yeah. And then on Saturday, like, after you're done eating lunch or something, you're like, okay, let's look at Ant-Man times. Yeah. And then you look at Ant-Man times. That's what I do with yeah. me and my friends. That's what I do with me and my friends. Is that normal? Is th that's not normal? That's not normal. What the fuck? That's, like, not, like, normal white people normal. Uh, from what I've heard. Wrong. From what I have heard on, like, see, multiple podcasts. This, this is why we can't have a science seat. This is why we can't have a science. But see, but they can do, they can still have a science. Like that, like, you know, when we decide to go to Ant-Man, I don't buy the tickets two hours in advance, right? Like I still mm -hmm. go to the theater and buy the tickets, right? Yeah. That's fine. Uh, uh, but but the reason I hate previews is because previews ruin movies. Like, oh, like I agree. It's not that previews itself is bad. There are good previews. Usually mm -hmm. those are teasers, by the way, that are good. Mm -hmm. But like the modern day preview ruins everything yeah how many times have you gone to a mu movie and been like oh i saw this in the preview or oh it wasn't funny all the funny parts were in the previews yeah well like that's or like oh it spoils point. this action scene or yeah, spoils this and like, like i know some people aren't affected by that like I i've met people who will look up how the story look comes, up the yeah. synopsis of the movie before watching the movie and i'm like the fuck are you doing that really, dumb yeah but um, people do that yeah like my friend when we were watching the genius she's like just tell me who wins and i'm like the whole point is to figure out who wins why would i tell you who wins beforehand yeah, she's like you get no enjoyment out of yeah. learning who wins and some people are like it's the journey that matters and i'm like you are correct but that journey would be way way better yeah. if you didn't know what the fuck was at the end mm -hmm. so the modern day uh trailer really sucks so what i have done for many many years now um uh is i when when i have i told you this when the trailer starts of a movie I already know I want to watch. 
Okay. You just close your eyes. I close, close your ears. my eyes, like I shut my ears, and I, I kind of oscillate and hum to myself because just closing your ears isn't good no, enough. No, yeah. Right. And so the problem with that is that all my friends punch me in the dick. Okay. Not 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 great friends that are never gonna watch this, but I cannot tell you how much better my experience with movies has been ever since I stopped watching previous, yeah. right? Now, I know some people, like normal people, uh, are like, well, how do I know what movies are even out? Or how, how do I know movies I wanna watch if I haven't seen the previews? And, and I understand that struggle yeah. because like, I, I go to movie websites, right? Like, I how, know. Do you get, how do you get advertising for certain movies, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I kind of understand that. But like, for me, it's like, maybe if you just watched one or maybe, you're like, damn, this is kind of interesting. I want to watch this. Then I shut my eyes and I yeah. close my ears. I mean, you have to realize Steven is not a casual movie goer. Steve, Steven really likes watching movies, right? Yeah. So if you're a casual kind of movie goer, then it might not be for you, right? I can understand you want to see previews. I can understand you kind of want to be like, okay, I kind of want to get a gauge if this movie will be funny or not, whether it's worth the money. Like, I can understand that. But for me, I'm not at Steven's level, but I can still understand where he's coming from. But like, I think you should try it. Yeah. Like, I'm not telling you, you don't got to do it for every movie, right? But if you already know, I want to watch Spectre because it's a James Bond movie. Yeah. I want to watch that, right? Don't watch the trailers. Just like I guarantee you. Well, I can't guarantee you the movie's good. And, and, now, it might not be and good. nowadays, like most movies that come out, they're usually like a, a part of a trilogy or part yeah. of a series or they're like it's a film adaptation of a book or whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. It's very rarely an original property. And yeah. if it is original property, like. It might be worth seeing just That's, yeah. for that fact alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for real, like I and like I am so crazy to the point where like like for the event for Age of Ultron, I didn't see anything. I didn't yeah. read a single news article. I didn't watch a single TV spot. I didn't watch a single trailer. I tried to. Be it, like I didn't even want to know like who was in the movie, but of mm. course that's really really hard to, yeah. to stay away from. Like and like I think I I was actually one of the few people that I know that really enjoyed that movie because I think because I because I watch sometimes I watch the trailer afterwards yeah. and I'm like what the fuck like they ruined this they ruined this they ruined yeah. the Hulkbuster scene with oh, the Hulk yeah. that was so great like they ruined this they ruined this joke and I'm like that sucks like. It would have been if you didn't if you like didn't know it would have been a much more enjoyable experience. Yeah, and that's why to bring it all back, I love Korean theaters because yeah. they don't have previews. I don't have to worry about all that stuff. I can go in as uh, as one of my favorite podcasts is the Slash Filmcast podcast, and one of the hosts does what I do now, um, and he you know he calls him he calls us like we are the unsullied. We you know like. Like in Game of Thrones, we we are not sullied by useless marketing material that fucks up our experiences. Yeah. Things. So I just want to say, just in general, uh, Korean show. Korean movie experience I think is is far better mm -hmm. um, than the American experience, uh, not including the lack of some movies, which in True. which in turn might actually be a, a positive. Because when you're when you have like the burden of of like choice, you don't really have a choice, mm. right? You only have like kind of hit movies that you go to watch. Well, when I went to, cause Ant Man didn't come out yet in Korea, but I yeah. was going back to America for summer vacation, yeah. right? So the, the first thing I did uh, was the next day I went to watch Ant Man, yeah, and right. like um, there's a new theater. There was a new theater in my town. Well, yeah. kind of like the town next over where they do assign seats yeah. and they do it in these like lazy boy reclining chairs that oh, actually like, nice. that, like eh, and like eh, yeah. like it was amazing problem each ticket was like 18 bucks oh god um, it was crazy but it would the experience was so like the seat was amazing like uh you know so much room like assigned seats you don't gotta worry about nobody um but it's like in korea it's still cheap like yeah. the ticket is eight thousand won which yeah. is about Less than seven, seven dollars yeah. nowadays, and you know, especially if you get the couple seats, which you don't need to actually be in a couple, yeah. But you know, you get a they're in the prime seating areas, yeah. and they're b they're spots. bigger and, and they're nicer. Um, and uh, yeah, it's cheap, and and you can bring in whatever you want, in yeah. Korea. They don't you can bring whatever care. food you want. I've, I've brought matter. in hamburgers, yeah, that's to okay. eat. Like, there's a whopper out, a wa oh, not whopper, a whopper, there's a Burger King right outside the movie theater. I bought some whoppers, went in there, just ate them, yeah. Whatever. And if you want to get maybe, uh, you know, they don't have the 92 ounce super big gulp size, no. but you they know, have, you get their large 
Uh, it's pretty and large. It's it's not bad. It's pretty large. You know, it's like a dollar fifty. It ain't seven dollars <laughs> like it is. In, um, in, the concessions yeah. in Korean movie theaters are so cheap. I just, oh, I don't even know how they make money. To be honest, that's like, what I was about to say. I was like, how do they make money? Yeah. It's crazy to me, uh, but you know, if you had told me that about the Martian, what? I would have told you like to get movie tickets early because because I, um, I honestly I thought like 25, 24 hours in advance would be enough to get right. decent seats because it's only me and my girlfriend. Right, right. right. So well, it's not like I'm trying to buy for like six or seven people, right? That's not a normal thing. It's because the Martian, like uh, the Martian, it is like the number one. It's super hyped. It's like the number, I think it made the most money as a foreign movie in Korea, like uh, that weekend. Like it was insane. Like because Interstellar was a ginormous hit here, yeah. they pushed hard as fuck with the Martian um, oh, that makes sense. Uh, materials. And so like, um, that's why it was so, yeah. like uh, I didn't want to watch in 3D. I don't like 3D. I don't like 3D. But the 3D tickets for that movie was sold out like a week in advance. For the, for the first for the for the first showing for the yeah. first weekend, um, it was crazy. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm planning to watch it probably sometime this week or this weekend. So please no spoilers. You should watch it. It's really good. Yeah. Book's better though, which you can listen to the audiobook by the way. Yeah. But even if you watch the movie, you should read the book because the book is like it's a different experience. It's just a different experience of reading a book. It is, but but it's like everything that happens in the movie is awesome, and it the same things happen in the book, but it. Okay, we'll talk about this yeah, when we finish watching. Yeah, I don't want to, you know, I hate spoilers. Right. Um, but, you know, moving on to things that were spoiled. Yeah. Um, I'm Pretty Rap Star. Now, yeah. I'm Pretty Rap Star, uh, in the last After Show show, it was, we had just seen, or I had just seen episodes one and two. Yeah. Um, and, and as of now, I've seen three and four with a little bit of online clips of five. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's behind because someone's got to sub it, which, you know, she does it for free, or those people do it for free. You can't get mad at them. They're a little slow, but you know, yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, they're doing something for us that I would. It's I a know, free service. It's a free yeah. thing. Um, so we're a little behind, and of course, we talked about how like all the websites spoil everything yeah, they about do. what happens. Yeah. Um, but I, I did want to bring up I'm Pretty Rap Star because um, the big thing is that. You know, the hype queen, Trudy, in episodes one and two, which we talked about a lot, uh, is, now, is now the, like, the basic bitch. Yeah. Uh, because um, just all, everyone turned on her. Like, everyone found this new heroine yeah. of Yezzy. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I've been on the Yezzy boat since, like, day one. When, when they were first coming out with, mm -hmm. like, the rapper's going to be on the show, Steven and I had to talk about this. And I was like, oh, I'm really looking forward I mean, Steven was like, oh, I'm really looking forward to this rapper. I'm really looking forward to this rapper. And I was like, I'm really looking forward to Yezzy. And he mm -hmm. was like, Yezzy? Who's Yezzy? I was like, oh, no, she's a rapper for Fear Star. Mm -hmm. And I like her style because she's very similar to L.E. Mm -hmm. And L.E. was kind of like her mentor. Mm -hmm. And she kind of really sucked it up. In, yeah, in the first two. She, she was they edited terrible. it really badly. Yeah, in in um, uh, episode one and two. Yeah. But now she's starting to come around. Yeah, she's like the success story. Like, she was almost relegated uh or eliminated sorry yeah. and uh and she came out with the crazy dog rap and mm -hmm. kind of turned her whole her whole thing around um and like i just love like i'm pretty rap star we talked about this but like i'm pretty rap star is just the like epitome of like everything that's wrong with k-pop and yeah. i can't look away yeah, it's it's like it's how rap. fast it is to turn on somebody, right? Like Trudy was like the second coming of rap gods, yeah, a month ago, and now it's like that bitch is fucking and whack, like, and I never liked her. It's like I no, never liked her, and it just like came out of nowhere with like no sort of like warning. No. It's well, not even really. Plausible. It was like she she lost the thing and she messed up and she started crying. Yeah. And like as you as you told me about you've yeah. been in Hyorin, like yeah. like just because she's crying, people are like that ain't hip hop. Like you lost, you, you, you lost, you don't cry, bitch. And it's like none of this is hip hop. Like yeah. a real person, like a real hip hop person would be like, this is all joke shit, right? Yeah. So like none of it's hip hop. But like they were like it's hit. And then like her middle school picture uh, came out, and people were like, wow, she looked like a normal a normal Korean person. I can't believe that. And it, and for me, it's like, bitch, did you not? Did you did you think she looked like that you middle think she school? Came out like you think she came out tan as fucking with please, dreads? Like hell please, no. Please. Hell no. That's some appropriate fucking Asian right yeah. here, right? Uh -huh. Which is fine. I mean, like again, like people change, right? People like uh -huh. you know, I dress wanted to dress a certain way, and I wanted to be a certain way. 
you know, when I was growing up, but like, don't be like. In high school, I didn't own a single hat. Oh my God. I didn't own a single hat in high school. I actually kind of dressed about the same <laughs> as I always do because I had no swag. I had zero swiggy, all right? Uh, actually, oh, I didn't buy any of my own clothes until college because my parents, my mom would buy them all. Hmm. I don't, is that not normal? I mean, I bought some clothes in high school. I didn't get any money. She wouldn't give me any money to buy clothes. So if I needed new clothes, she would buy for me because she, she didn't want to give me no money. Well, usually if like I needed new clothes, I'd go with her. To, like. Oh, I was lazy. Clothes. I was lazy. That's your problem. That is my problem to this day. Um, but I just love her and then everyone's now backing Yezzy yeah. and they're like hyping her. She's like, yeah, she was going in, right? Like yeah. Yezzy's the only one that understands she's in a a dissing Dis battle, battle or a dissing show, like a, a hip hop show where yeah, you talk kind of crudely and, and yeah. whatever. Um, she's the only one that's aware of her situation and yeah. people are finally realizing that like, Hey, hey, like this is kind of what this show's supposed hey, to be like. Hip hop, you know? Yeah, this is a hippity hop, right? Dee, 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 dee. And so her, like, this battle with Sua went very viral. Yeah. Um, where she, like, well, I mean, I was talking to you before, yeah. where, like, I saw on Reddit, people were like, she straight up murdered that bitch. Like, she, like, you know, reached, you know, into her throat and out her anus. It was so hard that Yezzy went in. No. And, like, I watched it what and I was that? like, I mean, she she went in comparatively to the other girls, um, but like I didn't think her I didn't think it was that great. Like I thought her, yeah. uh, I thought she went in harder on her crazy dog. Yeah, crazy thing. dog was really like she talking about like she talking about all you dudes watching That's it, it jacking off and yeah. like like wiping cum off shit. Like she yeah, was kind of going getting, in. She was getting she was getting yeah. nasty. Um, but like her rap, it was just kind of like you ain't nothing. You know, you just a. Uh, a little girl trying to be, you know, a rapper. Like, it was, yeah. like, uh, true. Yeah. It wasn't not true. Yeah. But I didn't think it'd go in that hard. Um, uh, because Steven and I, we like watching so rap I, battles, rap battles. So I was obsessed for a while with this thing called, like, battle rap. Yeah. Because I had seen a clip of it on Reddit. Yeah. Um, I forgot the dumbass title, but it was, like, white guy destroys it's black guy. Black, black, it black guy. It was, it was like, clickbait time. Uh, whatever. And like I was like, battle rap, this sounds dumb. Like yeah. rapping, you know, is like freestyle, right? That's rap. But like this is all pre-planned, like, but they have to memorize it all, right? Yeah. And it's like a multi-round up to maybe 30 minutes. Like you'll probably have to rap 15, 20 minutes of material, right? Yeah. It's all planned, okay? But that doesn't matter. It's like they're so clever. And they so and they rhyme unlike a lot of rappers nowadays, right? You can understand future. what they say, right? Someone's got rabies? <laughs> oh, so there's like this video of uh I don't know if you guys know Hobson. Nope. Uh Hobson's like this kind of rapper. He's a little bit preachy, but he makes this video kind of like making fun of future mm. <laughs> about like oh how i think i've seen this you probably have and there's a line that he was like i went to the doctor he looked at my dick and said i had rabies <laughs> 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 like i was just buzzing out laughing yeah, like if you haven't seen it you should go see is that it. Like, Hobson, he like uh, starts rapping like old school rappers right or am i thinking of a different video no definitely i'll different show you after video. i'll show you after we're done but you should go oh. check it out i've actually i think that's like the new trend because i've seen at least four or five different rappers making like making fun Paris. of the new trend yeah. of rappers yeah. um but, uh, you know, I, I bring up battle rap because there's a rapper that I really love. His, his name's Roan. R-O-N-E. -E. Yeah. And, like, he is just straight. He, he's everything I love about rappers, right? Where, like, I think a lot of actual, he's white. He's so got, a lot of he's actual character. rappers, like, yeah. are, like, you know. He, I, I think what he, he equated it to is, like, battle rap is, like, spoken word. Yeah. It's, like, spoken word but faster and, and, and With rhyming. Beat. Yeah. Um, and like the, he was, I think he was like a spoken word person yeah. and he kind of transitioned to battle rap, but like his, Are just his straight, rapping is just so just straight dark, just good. straight like, and, and like that's something humanistic. I don't know yeah. what to say, man. Like, so like, there's a battle where he, it's like round three of his yeah. battle with this, this kind of very heavy set black guy. Yeah, he's, he's called like um, what, Big, Big something or something. Big Tyrone, Big T, I think it's Big, Big T. T. Yeah. Um, and he, like, I, I remember I described he he what he did. He destroyed him as a person, not was, even like a rapper. Amazing. It was just like, 
Oh, why would you say that to him? I'm like, gonna find it. And I'm gonna link it in the description oh below. My I'm gonna link it. Like it. Like when you're like, oh, oh like God. Yezzy murdered Sua. It's like, nah. -uh. Oh you God. have not seen murdering Murder until you've seen, seen that. Oh my God. I remember you showed it to me. I was like, oh. It was. You should. Oh. I was just like, oh, I was. Afterwards, I was just kind of like, you know. Oh, and there's like so much. How would you say like, that to a human being? It it, it hurts, but it, it also rhymes. It's truthful. It flows. It hurts. Yeah. It's like it's it's good. It's artistic. Yeah. It's 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 good. Yeah. It's good. It's really good. And and so whenever I see like those one v one raps on the Unpretty Rap Star, I'm like, this Damn. is absolutely nothing compared to yeah. those battle raps. This is like kids playing house. Yeah. yeah. Actually, one of my favorite Roan battle raps is the. It, I think I showed it to you. The compliment. Yeah. Rap battle? Yeah. Um, so basically, like rap battles, you put the other person down. But yeah. in this rap battle, they compliment the other person. Yeah. And whoever compliments the other person better, they win. Yeah. So it's just so many ways of like calling the other dude handsome and or like say well built. Dick is, dick is dick is big, yeah. It is amazing and like. It's like, fun. That's like, fun, man. I like, like, I've always liked rap because I've always liked rhyming. Like, I always love it when people rhyme. And a lot of rappers don't really rhyme anymore. Or they rhyme the same word seven times. Like Lil Wayne kind of set in motion, right? Mm -hmm. And like, so when I hear this battle rapping, I'm like, rhyming is, because I think that's the hardest part about rapping, is rhyming. Like, I think the syllables for me. Like I, I think if you're like Busta Rhymes, that's, hard in its own oh, category yeah, yeah. but like most people i don't think rap where the syllables really matter to me to uh, personally uh -huh. like i think at the normal kind of uh rpm rap per yeah. minute or whatever like rap for me BPM rhyming is the uh no it's the <laughs> rap per minute, minute. rotations it, per minute yeah it's the uh it's the the the, the, <laughs> the bpm bars per minute <laughs> no 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 it's the rickety <laughs> Ruby to rap hands per minute. Yeah. Um, How many? It's a rhyming. I like the rhymes. Rupa, Ruby rhymes per minute, man. Rhymes per minute. Meow, 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 meow. Um, but yeah, so that's, I guess, I'm pretty rap star. Um, what kind of the last thing we want to talk about? Uh, do you still want to do the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do, do that. flashback. But I'll, I'll talk about the way you set that up. Uh, so Steven and I, we are really big fans of League of Legends. Uh, many of you don't know that. Uh, but Steven and I went to the World Championships last year, and the World Championships are going on as we speak. Um, I think they are in the quarterfinals. Yes. So, uh, me and Steven, we have been fucking up our sleep schedules by watching these games because they are in France, and now they're in uh, London. So, um, we kind of wanted to talk about that because me and Steven have been talking about it kind of a little bit to each other, not really so much, but... And we know we have some male fans, you know, yeah. um, so we'll talk about that after Flashback. Now, if yeah. you didn't turn in, tune in to last week's After Show Show, Flashback is where we go back about six months or ten episodes ago, look at those songs and quickly kind of just talk about whether or not we li even listen to these songs anymore or if they're still uh, straight fire. And I kind of the theme from last time was like, was that really six months ago, right? Like, it was yeah. like, I swear this song I'm looking at this list now, I'm just like, I heard this on the radio the other day. Yeah, like, but uh, this was a six months. So this is from episode 68. Yep. And I think I remember we both Back chose this April. song. Yeah, yeah, I think we both chose this song. And our favorite song of episode 68 was... Mew, mew. Mew, mew. Mew. Mew, mew. Mew, mew. That is uh, Sunny. Featuring Becky Eden from 15 and me. Yeah. That song was is was good and it's still good to this day. And I real I really have not listened to it. I have not listened to I have it. Not listened to uh, it besides very long time. obviously just hearing it on the street. Mm, mm. But I hear it every once in a while, but I'm not out as much as you are. Um mm. so I haven't really heard this song in a really long time. But I do remember that part and uh I kind of want to you, make sure you, I go back you, and you, make sure it's you, in my playlist. Because I feel like you, it may have like you. It may have like slipped out of my playlist and I just haven't heard in a while because I should. I do really like that song. <laughs> How the next one? Uh, the next song is from our gal Lim Kim with Ow. Ow, 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 ow. I, I like that song then. I still like it now. Obviously, uh, my playlist doesn't really work as well. But uh, this will definitely be... These, Two songs will definitely be in my considerations for the top, the top 10 list. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, Sunny is definitely for me, like, but the Lim Kim song is still like, eh. it's a good song, but it's not a great song to me. I I, I haven't heard it in probably yeah. five months. I, yeah. I haven't heard that yeah. song. Um, but it is a very distinct song, uh -huh. um, and maybe maybe I should listen to that again. Maybe I haven't been thinking about Lim Kim. Oh, oh, but the thing is, oh, I remember oh. like again, like the chorus was good, but the rest of the song I, I don't oh, remember it being that. Da, da, ba, ba. Oh. Is that more chorus or is that like that's the how the part. song goes? Oh, maybe I should listen to it again. Uh, uh, now the other two songs I remember. I, uh, uh, Mina this, was here. Was Mina here? Songs. Yeah, Mina was on this because yeah. that's why we split it up this oh, way. Oh yeah, because yeah. both of these songs I have not heard what a single I, time. I think I think I, think I got to choose Sonny's. Oh, and, and I chose the, the later one. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. And Mina chose these two. Yeah, um, obviously, obviously. Uh, well, this is uh, this song's by Unique with uh, Ayo Ayo. Ayo Ayo. I haven't heard that song since. No, I mean it's. Pretty good. It was a pretty good song then, and it's an okay song now. Uh, it's what it is. I can't even remember that song. I can remember the music video though, because they were like in paint in a warehouse, and then there was that one dude who looked like the one dude who looked like he wasn't even aware the oh, camera was yeah. on, and he was just like, uh? <laughs> "Oh, we're shooting a music video," <laughs> and then like kept it in. <laughs> yeah. Um, the yeah. other one, the next one was by uh, Hot Shot. Watch out. No. Nope. This I remember zero. Nothing. I remember nothing about this whatsoever. Zero things. Um, and then uh, I picked uh, EXID's Ah Yeah, Ah Yeah, Ah Yeah, Ah Yeah, Ah Yeah. I actually haven't heard this so much. Yeah, I haven't heard it in a long time, um, but I still do like it. I mean, I, I watched uh, I watched EXID uh, uh, Weekly Idol. I've been watching EXID uh -huh. uh, Showtime yeah. um, recently too. And, but, like, I, I, I mean... I still would much, much, much rather listen to Up and Down. Uh, yeah. I think I felt like, even though I, I guess I picked this, but like looking at the rest of the songs, like there was no other song yeah. I could have picked. Um, because at this time we were just like, okay, you have to choose songs that no one else Yeah, choose. there really wasn't too much. Because there were three of us at that time, so. Three of us, and it was a, a solid week. And the other song, the last song that was kind of in our main section was... Dal uh, Sherbert. Dal Shabet with yeah. Joker. I don't remember that song. I don't. I all I remember is that they had like a red kind of deal. I don't know. No, zero, yeah. zero memory. So I think of all of this, really, the only two song, or for me, Sunny, Miu, definitely still a thing. That that is potentially in contention for top ten for me. Yeah. Exid, no, probably not. It's definitely up there. It might be in top twenty if we were to make it yeah, twenty. Yeah, top twenty but for me. I don't think I would ever 10, put in top think. ten. Uh, and Lim Kim is, I mean, it's out for me. That's in. It's probably not top 10. That's out for me. Um, but the rest of it. Like, oh. Yeah, it's probably not. You know. I'm trying to think. Let me see the other songs we totally skipped. Oh. Oh Cupid! my Cupid! Oh my, my God, God, Cupid! Oh my God, Cupid! Wow, that was fucking Cupid, great. Cupid, shut my heart. Cupid, 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 like, who's that Black Beach Ingo? And then it turned out we it was Tail because we talked about it. Yeah, Tail, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Yeah. Anyway, so Cupid. Uh, what else is there? Oh, yeah, Park Bodam Celebrity. Oh, that was pretty much just the celebrity copy of the other song. Yeah. Uh, none of these songs were worth, were uh, worth talking about. Jinishan. Because sometimes there's a song that we kind of skip that later on becomes a little bit more popular, but like, I don't really see anything that like, well, really, really. Um, damn, six months ago, you weren't that hot. You weren't that hot. Um, but uh, tell us if you thought any of those flashback songs you still really like. Maybe you like that AOAO song. Maybe no, you, you probably like Mio. Maybe you know who Mio, Hush Mio, is. Mio, Mio, Mio. Mio. Nice. Mio, see, that's the thing. Mio, Mio is good. Also, You and Me by Kisum. Good. Bet way better than Mia Mia though. I think so. Way better. I that think so. I think if any, if there's any song in contention for top Five. number one or top three, top three, yeah, uh, Kisum. That Kisum song. You and I, or you and me. Something you, you and me. me. Yeah, you and me. Yeah, actually, I haven't heard that song in a while. I'm gonna go play it after. 
Um, anyways, let's talk about League of Legends. I mean, League of Legends, goddamn League of Legends. If you have no, if you you don't give no shits about turn video games, now. just turn off now. Turn Tune off in now. next week for our main main episode. Yeah. Um, but if you do like League of Legends and you, uh, and you know you've been watching Worlds, um, just know that Josh and I. Are, are we are watching it avidly. It. I'm loving this world so much more than last it's, year's. The, the meta for this world is just wide open. It's awesome. Like, I remember last wide year, it was open. just same pick after same pick after yeah. same pick, and I, I was mean, just tired of it. I mean, the Mordekaiser ban is pretty much... Well, I think uh, I think that's great. I, I was telling my friend about it. Yeah. Like, I think one of the reasons why it's so wide open is because someone has to ban Mordekaiser and Gangplank. Yeah. And that leaves two extra champions that are yeah. available, and yeah. it's like, that's... So awesome because like yeah. you see so many picks. Um, yeah. In the group stage, it was kind of uh, more of I felt like all the teams were just playing champions that they're really comfortable with. Right. Like they were trying to play compositions that they've done like time and time again. Yeah. And the people that really did well in group stage are the ones that had multiple compositions that they can go towards to like kind of like rocks as a paper. Mm-hmm. Like uh, if you look at like teams like C9, they only had one. Yeah. It was very like. Once Obvious. they figured it out, yeah. they got, they got shotgun back. They got yarbined. Yeah. <laughs> so like the first, the first day, uh, the first few days of worlds and group stages were really surprising because I, I loved it. There were yeah, like there were so upsets. Many upsets. There were close close games. Yeah. Um, like there was, there was a point where I was like everybody I thought was gonna win was yeah. getting butt fuck. Yeah. Um, and then. As, I mean, things kind of, as things kind of shook out, like the teams that kind of advanced, kind of makes sense actually now that you think about it. Right. Well, it makes sense after watching them play. Did didn't make sense before watching some of them. Play. Well, we knew SKT was going through. through. Yeah. I was well, sure he- I do want to start like if you haven't watched World and you do plan on watching Worlds, we are going to spoil everything, everything. up until the quarterfinal. We yeah. uh, we haven't watched Fnatic versus EDG because that's going on right that's now. That's going on right now. I want to I wa- I was like, okay, we got to finish this by 2:30. I'm going to get something yeah. to eat. I'm going to watch Worlds. Yeah. But so we, we, if you don't want anything spoiled, just turn this off right now. Come back yeah. later after you've watched it, but yeah. um like like the story of like like of course we knew SKT was going to win. But the yeah. problem is we, everybody including me, everybody yeah. was expecting LG to win, but they didn't. Yeah. Like there was Cause totally because it had like a, a all star team essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like so, really, SKT was the only team that did it as expected. Yeah. And so like, for me, it's like at any moment. And they still lost a few they games too. No, they didn't lose any. The nine and zero. Yeah, they haven't lost any a single game yet. Did they lose? No, no. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking of um. Who's the other team KT? that was in the group stage? EDG. KT. KT. I was thinking of KT. I mean, they weren't in the same group, but they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but KG you lost know, the same area is what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. KG lost and Ku lost. Yeah. Um, a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but like, uh, you know, the best story. Like, I think I watched. Uh, the second week was my favorite week because it was pretty much I was like watching the train wreck that was NA. Yeah. It was hilarious. I mean, it was so hilarious. I, I've been. A part of League of Legends uh, since its beginning because mm. uh, I used to play Dota and mm. along came League of Legends and it was shit at the time and I was just like oh but this kind of fits my style more and I was there when Fnatic won for the first and then I've been since they even had any tournaments so just the fact that you know this fifth one is just so much different than all the other rest and it's just so satisfying. Yeah, yeah. It's like seeing, even just compared to last year, like just seeing how much the game has changed and yeah. grown. And, and uh, you know, I haven't played as much as you. But, yeah. you know, I've been playing for a couple uh, years. And couple, I, I mean, used to play. Playing, you're no, like, you're no rookie. You're a vet, right? Yeah, sure, uh, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Um, but, like, you know, just w- seeing the game, like, when we went to go watch the finals, like, you got to remember, like, that was the old map with yeah. the shitty textures. And, yeah. like, the game looks, like, so much better now yeah. than it just did one year ago. Yeah. It's crazy. So, I say all that to say that since the beginning, everyone thought NA was the shit, right? NA was where brands were made, like TSM, CLG, right? Um, and... Everybody thought that NA was the shit until they started having international tournaments. International tournaments. Yeah. And international tournaments 
like the first two two-ish seasons, everybody was like, okay, NA is shit. Europe though, mm. right? Yeah. And everybody thought, yo, Europe though, Europe though. But me and Steven, we knew, just let the Koreans get a hand on that. Just let the Koreans do that thing. Yeah. And what do you know? Like, well, I think year three, I think it was a, it was a Taipei Assassins that won TPA. Two was Taipei. Two was Taipei. Who is three? SKT. SKT. Uh, and four is uh, Samsung, Samsung White. White. Yeah. So pretty much by the second year, it was already like Asians taking over. Yeah. But I think the second year was mainly because there wasn't much tape of, of like the games that Taipei Assassins had. So like they kind of came in yeah. as like... A, uh, they, you can research yeah. research this. Yeah. Plus, I think um, like Koreans didn't have their own server until I think season two. Yeah. Um, they still have to play in NA. Yeah. Um, and I I ki- play from NA sometimes here, and it's not great. It's like it's 200 plus ping. Yeah. Um, and now they moved it to uh, Chicago, so yeah. like it's like 250 ping. Yeah, it's, it's unplayable. Awful. Um, but I say that to say this season, of all the players that are active on the eight teams, 40, the starters, half of them are Korean. Half. Yeah. Which makes sense, because... Yeah. We live in Korea. We know all their work ethic. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, my favorite is when they show, like, they show, like, SKT was playing the other day. shit. Like, they were showing SKT playing, and they were showing the coach talking to the players. And all the players looked at the coach like he was a teacher. They were silent. Yeah. They were all looking up at him. They uh-huh. were listening to what he said. Eye contact, eye contact. Uh-huh. Like, nodding their head. And, like, that's what a coach should be. Yeah. But, like, uh, and Fnatic kind of, like, they picked up their uh, coach and, like, I've been watching the Fnatic uh, yeah. kind of documentary yeah. series, and they're, they're a little bit more friendly, but they kind of treat that guy like he's their coach. He's not their yeah. friend. He's yeah. their coach. And but like NA. the NA team, just like we just fucking wanking off on each other, and yeah. like like they're st- we're still like immature. Because the thing little is, the NA, NA's coaches for a long time they were old players, pretty much. They still are yeah. old players. <laughs> yeah. And well, that's the problem. Anymore, it's like anymore. they used to be your peers, and now they're supposed to coach you now. But like, <laughs> like you know, if I think Coma for SKT, he used to be playing. Yeah. Well, that was a long ass time ago. Yeah. Like, but like you know, as long as you transition, like as long. As, the problem is, it's like I think League of Legends still isn't taken seriously in America. Even by yeah. the pros, it's not taken yeah. seriously. Yeah. Like the only regions where it's taken seriously is Korea. Yeah. And it's it's even China is not even that serious. Yeah. Um, because I've like uh, I've heard it I mean it's because their season's really long. Yeah. So there's so many games that don't even count, don't even matter. Yeah. So there's a lot of sandbagging. The yeah. internet sucks. Yeah. Um, like the only region that really takes a Gaming seriously is Korea, Korea. and yeah. guess what? They do pretty well. Yeah. Um, but my my all that wrapped around my the best part was watching uh, NA lose all ten games in the, yeah. in the second week. So yeah. I I have been an avid follower of TSM for a long time, and like I was a TSM fan before they even had Dyrus, right? Um, Not me. No. And just. When Dyrus first joined the team, I wasn't a big fan of him because I thought he was a better streamer than a player. Mm. And TSM has always been a better brand than they have been a competent. I mean, competitive aside team. from like the first couple seasons where it was just local tournaments and they were like banging with CLG. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I, I've never really because I didn't really pay that much attention to professional league of legends yeah. until season three uh, and so in season three the first team the only team that i really ever paid attention to was skt yeah. like i used to yeah. like i remember i had to pay you know fucking ten dollars a month to 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 watch the uh, the korean streams yeah. um but i was like that's what i want to watch like th- this team's awesome and of course it's a little bandwagony now because like they eventually were the best and they yeah. won um but like uh, that's always been my. I don't have a deep connection with yeah. any uh, American team, yeah. uh, so I, it's just always funny to me. It's, kind of, it's just kind of like uh, we came from that server, so it kind of have like a little bit of a. No, don't care. Yeah, I think my K-pop is very much like that too. Like I, I ain't really that. 
Like if SKT sucks balls, SKT and, sucks balls. And, and NA is like that team's just like I know they're not going anywhere, but I just kind of want to root for them. But the, the best underdog. part, the best part was that we had a chance. Like yeah. I know originally beforehand, it's like NA kind of sucks, but at the end of Group One, they had two number one teams. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like C9 and CLG. Like yeah. it was like this is our time again. And C9 and was like, whoa, they're not even like. The best yeah. team in NA. They're not even yeah. top three. They're like the seventh. They were best seventh team. at once. Yeah. Yeah. And they had to go through yeah. this, and it's like this is our time. Like you know, and of course CLG, the all our faith and all the memes, all the dank memes, whatever. But like, it was just give, give hilarious. It was just hilarious. <laughs> it was like a train, you know, train wreck in we slow motion of we seeing it. them implode. All, I have so hilarious. I have like a group chat of like all my friends and my because I had a team. This is how crazy I am with League of Legends. I had a team in America. Um, we were pretty much like a platinum team and we, we have a chat and they were talking about like oh man NA and I was like just wait just wait boys <laughs> NA will let us down again and they did yeah, yeah. but uh, anyway so we were really excited about Worlds yeah. um, really excited Can't to watch wait to watch game. a Fnatic EDG right yeah uh, if there's a number two team I really want to win it's definitely Fnatic yeah because I probably very similar to like K-pop where like I try to stay away from Weekly Idol and like secondary sources. Yeah. Like since I watched the Fnatic documentary series, I'm like I want Fnatic to win. Like yeah. I I know these people now, you know, and uh, I really hope they do. Uh, probably not, but it would be so great to not have a China, China, China Korea, Korea or final, China or, or a Korea Korea, Korea, Korea final. final. Like like it's been China Korea the last two times. Um, no, last year was white. Mm. No, 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 it was yeah, EDG. Yeah, yeah. EDG. Right. Uh, right. They had a self kill yeah, yeah, right yeah, before right, that. Right, yeah. um, so I hope that's the case. You know, I hope Fnatic can get through. I don't think they'll win, but I want them to put up a good showing because yeah. Fnatic is like a team that I feel is very exciting. And you're watching this next week with you know, so all the quarterfinals are already done. Maybe the semifinals are are already, already done. done. Yeah, but um, we're excited. We're man. excited. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, if you had nothing, if you know idea about League of Legends, you probably didn't stick through that. Nice. Um, but uh, thank you for watching. Josh is sleepy and tired. I'm so hungry too. Yarman. <laughs> Welcome, my chingus, to episode 78 of This Week in K-Pop. In this episode, we will talk about Acton Musician, Ailey, Hugak, Hyorin, Akon, Jay Park, Lil Boy and Basic, Oh my girl, Taeyeon, Yu Sung Eun, and Zion T. Welcome, my chingus, to episode 77 of This Week in K-Pop. In this episode, we will talk about Dia, Fairy and Crispy Crunch, Got7, Icon, Jesse, Mama Moo, Nudi, Park Kyung, Soyu and Kwang Jol Yol, and Zappa.